It's five decades since the Boeing Company of Seattle launched a program that would bring jet travel to the cities and towns of the world. In November 1962, this new airliner rolled out of the Renton factory, making its first flight on the 9th of February 1963 and entering into commercial service just a year later with Eastern and United Airlines. OK, ready to go whenever you are, Bob. Yeah, we're ready to go power up, make this old girl singing song. Listen to that. Nearly 50 years later, this historic aircraft is alive and kicking thanks to the efforts of Seattle's Museum of Flight. Well, now we're in the number one 727. It's, uh, we're located on Payne Field in Everett, Washington. Well, a 707 went into service to replace uh, DC-7C super constellations on trans-oceanic routes and transcontinental routes in the U.S. And then the idea was to extend uh, jet service down into the more medium range routes, and the 727 was born uh, as a three-engine airplane. Uh, the goal was to fly out of New York's LaGuardia Airport, which had a 5,000-foot runway. So this airplane has a lot of high-lift devices, you know, that were pioneered by Boeing, uh, triple-slotted trailing edge flaps and leading edge flaps and slats, and can fly slower on approach than a lot of those piston-engine airplanes it was replacing. Actually, the Havilland Trident had a three-engine configuration, so it wasn't totally new, but uh, if you took the engines available at the time and you, the thrust you needed and the size of the airplane, you, it came out like you needed three engines. And so then where do you put three engines? Uh, you could have put two on the wings and one in the tail, I suppose, uh, which is a configuration that DC-10 and TriStar have later on. But they wound up with three engines in the tail and uh, a silhouette that's, I think, pretty famous around the world. Boeing built 1,832 airplanes over a production run of 15 years or more. This airplane rolled out of the factory in November of 1962. It made its first flight in February of 63 and went to United in 64 after the flight test program was completed and it served its entire life with United Airlines. It was retired in 1991 and donated to Museum of Flight here in Seattle. So this is a very historic airplane. At the time when we built 1,832 airplanes, nobody ever thought that we'd build more airplanes than that of a single model. Of course, the 737 is way past that now. You can't see the future with great accuracy, as you can tell. In 1965, they stretched the airplane 20 feet, uh, I believe, and it uh, became the 200. I think they built about 585 100s, and the balance of about 1,200-some-odd were 200s. This particular airplane has got about 65,000 flying hours. It, uh, we estimate it flew about uh, 3 million passengers. And it uh, cost uh, United about uh, $3.5 million, I think. And it, they think it generated about $300 million in uh, revenues over its lifetime for the airline. If you look at the 07, 737, 74, 75, 767, all, the first the prototypes of all those airplanes remained in the Boeing inventory. They were always deemed uh, economically unrefurbishable into a commercially certified configuration. In this case, the number one airplane actually did go to the airline and Boeing kept the number two airplane, which is also here, by the way, in the Boeing factory here in Everett, uh, although it's disassembled. And uh, so this airplane is the prototype and it actually served a long, useful life with an airline. It had better performance, it had, uh, it had better economics, it had greater capacity, uh, better range and all the rest of this, but I, I think it was a more reliable airplane too. Uh, the engines were better. The JT-8Ds which were introduced on this airplane and are also on the 737 and DC-9 are a fantastically reliable aircraft engine, economic engine to operate. In the end, uh, like the Comet versus the 707, Trident versus the 727 or whatever, it's economics that rule. The airplane that has the better economics is the one that's going to win that battle in the marketplace. The airplane, as you can see, is in good condition from the floor up. The cockpit is intact and the passenger cabin is intact. And it's uh, very displayable. The only problem is uh, the place we want to display it is at Boeing Field and the new facility that we hope to build down there. And the airplane is located up 50 miles to the north here at Payne Field, so we have to get it down there somehow. There's two ways to do that, take it apart or to fly it down. 
Unfortunately, uh, after donation, United Airlines cannibalized the airplane and removed the engines, the APU, the fuel hydraulic system, uh, and so we, uh, we are trying to obtain either parts or another airplane that's due to be scrapped that we can swap the parts over for. This is not an airplane that was recovered off a scrap heap. The last flight of this airplane was actually a revenue flight from San Francisco to Seattle, Flight 838. It was a fully airworthy airplane, an air carrier, certifiable condition. The only thing that happened is with the, all the parts were taken off. United did paint the airplane in its original delivery color scheme before it was donated to the museum. This is the color scheme that it was when in the service with United in 1964. It's a three engine, a three flight crew member airplane and that's why if you compare it to the say a 737 which has been developed to the point where it has the same capacity and passengers or even more the same range or more you wind up with two pilots and two engines versus three pilots and three engines and you know rest is history after a couple of years of work we were able to you know re-energize the electrical system and so as you see it now we've got the fans and blowers all running the lights are on and the cockpit is powered. So it does look and sound like a real airplane and that's, that was a big encouragement to all of us. When this airplane is eventually displayed at the Museum of Flight, it's sure to be a sought after attraction. But restoration to an airworthy standard takes time, effort and patience. It all depends on the condition at the beginning and the condition that you want at the end and, and uh, how big and complex the airplane is. But we have a Boeing 247 uh, in the hangar right next to us. That airplane was in restoration for 13 years. Hey, Paul, I just want to show you something about this airplane. If you look closely on this airplane, you'll find initials carved all over this airplane. All the pilots and flight crews who flew this airplane knew that this was the number one airplane, a historic airplane. They all wanted to get their initials on there. There are hundreds of sets of initials. The effort to get November 7001 uniform flying again continues. And to keep up to date with progress, go to this web address.